Welcome to the AIM LearnFast e-training series presented by AIM Sports, providing support and training for your AIM Sports products when and where you want it. This AIM Sports LearnFast training module is, I have downloaded my data, now what? Part 2. This two-part LearnFast video series covers some basic topics and steps that you can do after downloading your data. Some of the highlights that we have covered in the I have downloaded my data, now what? Part 1 video are, the Race Studio 2 user interface, the selection criteria function, the Perlap color function, changing data trace colors, and sorting of channels. We have also covered the viewing of basic data, using different views, zooming functions, the snap function, and the time distance mode. For the first topic of this video, let's discuss track maps. The Race Studio 2 analysis software, with data from your AIM Sports data logger, can generate track maps both the standard track map if you have a speed sensor and lateral accelerometer or a GPS sensor and the GPS driven line map if you have a GPS sensor. For more information on standard track maps we have both basic and advanced learn fast videos available on the subjects. Since this data is from a solo we can view both track map types. Let's start by opening the GPS driven line track map by selecting the GPS icon from the primary icon toolbar. This is the GPS driven line track map. For a comparison, let's open a standard track map that has already been created by selecting the map pull down menu and then by selecting the show track map menu item. If you have left the color settings at the default values, the standard track map will have a white background and the GPS driven line map will have a black background. Let's take a look at each map type and look how we might best use each map. First is the standard track map. This map is created by either the rollout distance from a speed sensor and lateral acceleration values or from the GPS sensor data. You must have a standard track map generated to view data in the split and track reports and the standard track map will just give your general track location, not the actual driven line. The second is the GPS driven line map. This map is created from GPS sensor data and is the actual driven line. This is a more accurate map as it is based on the actual data, not a calculated graphical version of the track. This map can also be colorized based on any channel. In this case, the map is colorized based on the GPS-based lateral acceleration values, and you can see that the right-hand corners, positive lateral acceleration values, are colorized red, and the left-hand corners, negative lateral acceleration values, are blue. To remove the standard track map from the view, click the close button. And then to close the GPS driven line map, select the close button on the GPS tab. Now let's look at one of the functions that need to have a standard track map generated before you can view it and that is the split time analysis or more commonly called the split report and we open it by selecting the split time analysis icon in the primary icon toolbar. This is the split report. But sometimes, as you can see on the right edge, if you have a long lap with many track segments, they may not all fit onto the screen. So here is a quick tip. For this split report, we are still showing the measures and laps toolbar along the left edge of the screen. And if we temporarily turn that off, we will get more screen space to show the split report. To do this, select the View pull down menu. And then uncheck the measures toolbar menu item. And now with the measures toolbar closed, we can see the entire split report. The first thing you notice is that we are looking at the six enabled laps. However, there are two laps that are slower than the others, laps two and five, and it is a good idea to make sure that you disable these laps. To disable these laps, you can either right click right on the lap in the test laps toolbar and then select disable lap from the context menu or select the lap manager tab and disable the laps from there. To do this, first select lap 2 and then click on the disable button. Then select lap 5 and again click on the disable button. Now to return to the split report, select the split report tab. Now as we can see here, the split report has been updated and the four consistent laps are now the laps that are included in the split report values. 
Let's break down the split report and see what the different parts are showing us. First is the absolute split time section, where each of the enabled laps are broken down into the segment times. These segments are determined by the standard track map you have already created. In this case there are 20 segments with the default of red segments for right hand corners, blue segments for left hand corners, and green segments for straight sections. As you can see, the fastest segment is highlighted with bold blue text. Then in the theoretical best lap section, the split report compiles all of the best segments and gives you this session's best theoretical lap. Of course, with any session of more than a few laps, matching this best theoretical lap time will be impossible to obtain. Your goal, however, should always be to reduce the difference between your actual laps and your best theoretical lap. The closer these are, the more consistent your driving is proving to be. And back up in the split times area, the best lap is highlighted with bold red text. A very powerful tool inside the split report is the best rolling lap information. This is a lap that the driver actually ran, but it was not from the start finish line back to the start finish line. In this case, the driver ran a full lap from the beginning of the blue turn 5 segment back to the same point and it was a 229.802 when the best full lap from the start finish line was a 230.708, about 9 tenths slower. The split report also provides some powerful statistical information including the minimum, maximum, and average values for each segment along with the standard deviation. The lower the standard deviation values, the more consistent the segment is for the driver. And finally, here at the bottom of the split report, the same information is provided as up in the absolute split time section, but here the segment differences are provided as calculated from the segment times of the best lap. To close the split report, select the close button on the split report tab. To return back to the measures graph, select the measures graph tab. To bring back the Measures and Laps toolbar, you can use the quick shortcut of just tapping your keyboard spacebar, or by first selecting the View pull-down menu, and then by checking the Measures toolbar menu item. And here we are back to our main Measures Graph page. Now let's discuss some basic data analysis strategies. Here are the three basic data analysis strategies. First we have what we call the data acquisition triangle. All data that you will be analyzing will fit into one or two of these three groups. Many find that thinking of data analysis in this way helps them focus on the final goal of understanding specific data analysis needs. Always look for trends. Do not make any decisions based on a single lap, a single braking zone, or a single corner. If you do find something in your data, always look at several laps of the same situation to make sure you do not make decisions based on something that only happened once. Always ask and answer the question, why? Sometimes you may have to ask yourself why several times to get to the core answer to your question. Okay, here we are at the Measures Graph screen and we have the fastest lap open. In this case, we are looking at three channels in the main window, GPS speed, GPS lateral acceleration and GPS longitudinal acceleration. These are probably the core three channels you may work with most if you have data from an AIMSport solo like we have here. One of our basic data analysis strategies is to always look for trends and the best way to do that is by opening multiple laps from your session. The quickest way to do this is to simply double click on the lap you want to open in the test laps toolbar. We will start with lap number six. And then we will also double click and open lap 4 from the test laps toolbar. So now we have three laps open and we can now compare them and look for where the driver was either faster or slower. But as we look at the data, it is not real clear which data trace from any of the three laps corresponds with which lap. We have a very simple and fast function to fix this and it is the per lap color function that we discussed in some detail in part 1 of this video series and to turn this on, select the per lap color checkbox. As you can now see, each lap is assigned a color and that color is used throughout the measures graph. Let's start our quick tour of basic data analysis by understanding the time compare bar. By default, the time compare bar will automatically appear when you open two laps and if you are in the distance mode. 
the key to using the time compare bar is to understand that the fastest active lap will be the reference lap as shown by the red line in this example. Then the other active laps are compared against the reference lap and if the data line is above the reference line it is slower. If it is below the reference line it is faster. A good way to start using the time compare bar is to find areas where there are noticeable changes. Here is a good example. Right here very early in the lap the blue lap suddenly starts to trend upwards and the green lap begins to trend downward. This means that the blue lap was losing time and the green lap was faster, all based against the red reference lap. So your next question should always be why? So let's take a look at the data we have available. If we look at the GPS speed data trace, we can see that this data is showing the end of a straight section and then a breaking zone, as seen by the speed trace suddenly dropping. The green lap shows that the driver went further down the track before hitting the brakes, and the blue lap hit the brakes earlier than either of the other two laps. And this braking difference and resulting time gained or lost is clearly shown in the time compare bar. Of course simply driving deeper into the corner before applying the brakes can only go so far before the driver is not able to slow the car down enough to make the following corner. In this case we can always look at the GPS longitudinal acceleration data from the same braking zone. This is expressed in g-force and negative values are generated by the slowing of the car. The greater the number, the greater the rate of slowing. In this example, we can see that the green lap is showing the highest values. So as we have seen before, while the driver went deeper into the corner on that lap, the brakes were then applied harder to get the required slowing before the corner. Notice the opposite trend for the blue lap that we can clearly see as lost time by using the time compare bar. This is just one area of the lap. You would continue to look at the time compare bar for the remainder of the lap and find other areas of losses and gains and then ask and answer the question of why by using the data that you have available. One other basic but very powerful way to look at your data is by comparing laps from two different sessions, maybe from two of your own sessions or from two different drivers. I find it easier to start with just a single lap open from each test, so let's close all but the fastest lap in this session, lap 7. We could again do this through the lap manager, or the shortcut is to double click right on lap 6 in the test laps toolbar. And then to close lap 4, double click on that lap in the test laps toolbar. To open another test, we need to select the test database tab and then select the test you want to open. In this case, the Watkins Practice 3 test and then click on the Open Test button. Now we have two tests open, as you can see by the multiple tabs in different places and of course the two tests listed in the test loaded area. Now that we have the two tests open, to view the measures graph, select the tab. As you can see, the analysis of multiple tests looks and works the same as the analysis of two laps in a single test. You can still look at the time compare bar to find areas of changes and then analyze the data you have available to answer the important why question. Just like when we were analyzing multiple laps from a single test, you will also want to add more laps from each test so you can make sure you are making solid decisions based on trends. This ends part two of the I have downloaded my data, now what, learn fast video series. For more AIM Sports learn fast e-training content and information about upcoming on-site training seminars, visit www.aimsports.com forward slash support, your source for support and training of AIM Sports products when and where you want it.